What if we needed to calculate the total for each half year period inside a pivot table or calculate running totals that restart each half year period? We have a proper data set with daily sales. The first thing we need to do is convert this to an Excel table, insert the table option. This is not a pivot table. Or we can use the keyboard Control T. Click OK. We're going to name our table, Table Design, Properties, something like Daily Sales, and Enter. By converting it to an Excel table, if we add new records, or more importantly, new columns, the pivot table can see that new data. The next thing we need to do is create a pivot table where we take daily dates and group them up into years and months. Insert, pivot table, or we can use the keyboard, Alt and V. In the Create Pivot Table dialog box, existing location, F3. OK. We can group dates by dragging the daily dates down to row. We don't need quarters, so I can simply click and drag. In the row area, right click, expand, collapse, expand entire field. Instead of date, I'm going to call this column month. Now, that's not quite what we want. We want a break right after June. So we come over to our Excel table, and in the D column, directly next to our data set, you can name this what you want. I'm going to call this year part. And we need to create a calculated column here that will have a marker. All of the dates from January to June should say something like 2019 part 1. All the dates from July to the end of the year should say 2019 part 2. Now what is it that decides part 1 and part 2? I'm going to use the month function. The month function can take a serial number, and it just gives us a number 1 to 12. Now, this is an Excel table, so when I hit Enter, the formula automatically populates. All of these should say 1. All of the 7s to 12s should say 2. In the top cell, F2. Now, I'm going to ask the question of that month. Are you greater than 6? Now, the comparative operator makes this a logical formula that will deliver true and false. Everything 1 to 6 will come out false. 7 to 12 will come out true. When I hit Enter, that indicates the first part of the year. This is the second part of the year. Now, in order to convert a Boolean value, that's the fancy word for true and false, to ones and zeros, we can do any math operation. Now, I was careful with the logical test F2 so that the first part of the year would be false. That way, I can put parentheses around this to force the comparative operator that always is calculated after a math operator to calculate first. And then I'm going to add 1. Notice false plus 1, since it's a math operation, the false will be converted to 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. Down here, true, math operator converts it to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So when I hit Enter, there's my marker for part 1, part 2 of any given year. Now, you can create the rest of this formula the way you'd like. I'm going to say, hey, please give me the year. Notice it's serial number, just like the month function. Close parentheses, and I'm going to join it using the ampersand in double quotes, space dash space, and double quotes, and join it to the end. And when I hit Enter, now I have a marker in our data set that we can use as a condition or criteria in the row area. And then the pivot table will do the rest. If I click back in the pivot table, I do not see that new column. I have to come over, right click, refresh. And there I have my year part. I'm going to uncheck year, drag year part above month, and that is absolutely beautiful. I can drag sales over to values. It defaults to sum. And look at that, I'm getting the subtotals for every half year. There's the subtotal for part two of 2019. If I were to add the year back in, I actually could get the grand total for the year also. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to drag year off. Right click, number formatting, something like number, comma, zero decimals. OK. We'll put a label at the top. Now we drag sales a second time. Right click, show values as, and down to running total in. And there's show values as. 
month is exactly what we want a running total in. Once it gets to the end, then I want it to start over here. Click OK. And there we have our running total. Right click, number formatting, and I'll format it the same. And there we go. By adding an extra column to our data set with a fancy formula, we can now create a pivot table with the subtotal and running total for every half year period. Thank you.